Super Soaker had serious engineering principles. This is awesome. Having a joystick that can go in eight directions, that's just unheard of. We call it mousetrap. Rectusec was bringing kids into the excitement that was going on in the country. The moment you pick up that item, you just feel that instant connection. It really touched millions and millions of lives. The toys that built America. New season, Sunday, October 23rd at 9 on the History Channel. There's Jeff. What's up, Jeff? What's up, Jordan? Good morning. What's up? Oh, you got the key art behind you. I like that. Okay. Oh, of course. Got to do it upright, man. You know, I love this series, and I'm so excited to talk to you about this new season of The Toys That Built America because, you know, I often think that I was born in the perfect time for toys and games. I'm Generation X, you know, so I was a okay. little, little boy in the 70s, teenager in the yep. 80s, you know, so I just had the best of both worlds. And uh, so much to talk about for the new season, but I just want to stick with one issue or one topic, and that's Star Wars, oh. right? <laughs> oh, 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 you're in my wheelhouse, man. Okay, let's talk Absolutely. about Star Wars. You know, the history of the Star Wars action figure, what a story. You know, uh, I was 11 years old when I saw the original Star Wars. I saw it probably okay. over 50 times. And I remember it well that there weren't any action figures or toys for that Christmas. I mean, people were clamoring yeah. for it. But I heard Mattel passed on Star Wars. All the toy companies passed on Star Wars, except one. So tell us that story. Well, it was, you know, so basically... The, the big toy companies at that time were Mego Corporation and Mego had just picked up Micronauts. And then, you know, Mattel was doing their thing and everything like that. So, you know, when the toy license was being shopped around, Mego passed. They said, we've already got something. So they went to Kenner Toys. Uh, for, actually, let me, go, let me go back. Mattel actually originally passed on the Star Wars license too because they just said, well, you know, we're not going to do this right now. Get back to us. Uh, so we went to Kenner. Kenner was a small toy company at Cincinnati, Ohio. They were doing like stuff like Easy Bake Oven and other kinds of stuff like that, and home goods. And the Star Wars license essentially changed their, their industry. It changed the, the industry as we know it, because I'll tell you, the way that that whole toy line came to market with Bernie Loomis as head of Kenner, it's just marketing genius. It's, it's textbook marketing that is still covered in business schools to this very, very day. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. Go but ahead. To, Early bird kit. Yeah. Yeah. I know to send kids an IOU for Christmas and say, oh, your action figures, they'll, they'll come about three or four months later. I mean, I, I, they'll never forget that. And I filled out the membership form and all of that things to get my action figures later. Um, but, you know, with the success of Empire Strikes Back, I mean, Kenner was ready, weren't they? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's very interesting and we'll back it up first and, and we'll we'll cover that. So essentially for the holiday season, there were no Star Wars action figures that were available. So Kenner came up with this ingenious marketing plan and they actually gave people a kit, which was a backdrop with some stickers in it and a membership kit. And it was essentially a promise. And they said, look, you know, you're going to buy this kit. You're going to buy this display stand with little pegs that you can put your action figures on. And when the toys are ready, we we promise you, you're going to be the first on your block to get them. And that's essentially what people did. They bought an empty envelope and the figures came, you know, after Christmas, you know, May or April or whatever. And they, then they had them. But by the time Empire Strikes Back rolled around in 1980, Kenner was ready. They started really ramping up Empire Strikes Back action figures. And by the time Return of the Jedi came out, they uh they were even more ready. Okay, so here's the thing. You're you're a Star Wars guy, okay? Oh yeah. So a lot of people don't don't know this. The Empire Strikes Back toy line had the shortest shelf life of all the brands because they were catching up after Star Wars, but they were actually releasing Return of the Jedi toys before the movie came out to start meeting to, to meet the demand. So the Empire toys are actually some of the hardest to find right now. Now, watching this, the first episode of the new season about Star Wars, about what we're talking about today, I know that Star Wars was originally called Revenge of the Jedi. And George Lucas says, hey, you know, Jedis don't do revenge. They, it's a return. Yeah. But I had no idea that Kenner spent all that money and all the, they had millions of toys already with revenge on the packaging that had to be destroyed. Yeah, so it was very interesting when Return of the Jedi started coming out. Uh, it was. It was shot under Revenge of the Jedi, and very, very early marketing actually said Revenge of the Jedi. A lot of people don't know that you can find very early packaging on Kenner Toys with a promotional sticker that says Revenge of the Jedi. It's not around anymore. You, you, can't, you can't find them anymore. Um, 
So what happened is, is as they started ramping up production with the packaging, because they wanted to get them out to the stores, the name change came down and they, they destroyed a lot of the packaging. They were able to take the toys, you know, off the bubble package and, and reuse them. But a lot of that packaging ended up in a landfill or in a shredder. And meanwhile, Mattel trying to catch up uh, Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar one Galactica. And one of my favorite shows, but I watching the documentary, watching the series, I'm like, wait a minute, it bombed. <laughs> I mean, it, and even Lucas sued him because it looked too much like Star Wars. Yeah, I, you know what? I liked Battlestar. I, I really did. The problem with, you know, the problem that Mattel ran into with Battlestar Galactica is once the toy line, or once the TV series was canceled, the toy line died out because they didn't have that TV show to support it. But you know what? As a child of the 70s, you know this as well as I do, Star Wars dominated everything. And you're going to learn about the history history and the compelling stories behind Star Wars. And more importantly, you guys are going to learn, the viewers are going to learn what Mattel did to sort of combat Kenner and that great rivalry that sort of went on between Mattel and Kenner. And in Mattel's answer to it, come on, you know it, Masters of the Universe and He-Man. And that all takes place Sunday's episode, October 23rd, the great rivalry between Star Wars and Masters of the Universe. Hey, my friends and I, we were in high school at the time when that came out, and we still said, I have the power all the time, you know? <laughs> of course, everyone did. Yep, that, everyone did. <laughs> and Jordan, that's just the first episode. You know, I can't wait to see the entire series this season. And uh, thank you so much for joining me and, and talk about our geek passion for toys. And uh, best thank of you. luck. Let's talk again soon, okay? Let's do it, talk, do it again soon. Thank you so much.